Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Coach Mike with Elite Performance. What I want to talk to you today is about diet. Now, I know there are a lot of different definitions that could come along with the word diet, but for, the, for today's discussion, um, the term diet is simply what you eat, right? So everybody is on a diet. We're just talking about simply what people eat, okay? Now, in order to really understand what's a good way to eat and what's not a good way to eat, what you have to do is something called multi-generational type research. All right, You have to look at the way a group of people have been eating for an extended period of time and they have to be eating the same way for that extended period of time. The reason for that is just because the human body is put together really good. All right? you, you, you're not meant to break. It takes a long time for things to fall apart. You know, it took a long time for us to understand the effects of DDT, or formaldehyde, or asbestos. You know, things don't just break overnight. So someone can have a certain lifestyle and be seemingly healthy. The question is, is that lifestyle diet uh, going to be healthy to help facilitate that this line of people can stay healthy for a long time and even you know, stay on earth? Can eating this way produce longevity? All right, we have to look at it from the big picture. All right, now there has not been very much of this type of research done, right, and there hasn't been, I don't think, any in probably the past fifty years or so. But the the research that comes to mind for me, and as always, I'm going to leave the link in the description to anything that I'm talking about as far as research goes because I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to look at this stuff for yourself. I want you to form your own opinion. Um, whether you believe you know, my opinion or not, I don't know, but at least you're informed. All right, so, but the research that comes to mind for me is research that was done by Dr. Price and Dr. Pottinger, uh, a doctor and dentist, so basically, you know, both doctors. And what they did was they went all over the world and they looked at indigenous people all over the world and the way these people had been eating for hundreds of years, all right? Their diet had not changed. So they went and looked at the Maori in New Zealand. They looked at the Maasai in Tanzania. You know, the, the Eskimos, uh, can't call them that anymore. Uh, Okinawa, Japan, the indigenous people in Bolivia, Peru, uh, Brazil, Australia, like they went to all of these places where technology, I guess you would call it, had not affected. These people were eating a certain way for a very long time. And what they found was, first, the earth is really, 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 really big. All right. And the climates go from extremely hot and dry to extremely cold and dry and everything imaginable in between. So any way that a person can live is, is possible on earth because of the different climates. So it means any way that a person could possibly eat is, you know, is, is innumerable because of just the, the, the landscape, the different climates and all of these things, all right? So there should be a huge diverse way in a way that people eat over a long period of time yet still remain healthy. However, what they found was, number one, let me tell you what they didn't find. They did not find a vegan tribe anywhere on earth. They did not find a vegetarian tribe anywhere on earth. They did not find a pescatarian tribe anywhere on earth. Everywhere on earth that people had been eating for hundreds of years and they were healthy, they didn't have type 2 diabetes. They weren't dying of heart attacks. They didn't have cancer. They didn't even know what these diseases were. They were healthy, right? The bone structure of their heads and jaws were different. They didn't have to have their wisdom teeth cut out because their jaw uh, bones weren't big enough to let the wisdom teeth come in. Like The whole facial structure was totally different in these people from what we kind of look like today. And they were all together healthy. And what he found was, let's say you had two tribes that were relatively close. So let's say they're about 100 miles apart. But because of, you know, some mountain range or some gully or some, some, some valley or something, one tribe had more access to animal flesh than the other tribe. The, the, the tribe that had more access to animal flesh was more healthy than the tribe that did not. 
All right. This research was backed up in a bunch of different studies. Now, the other studies weren't multi-generational. They looked at small, small, small amounts of time, but the study still backed up what Price and Pottinger found. Right? There was a doctor, uh, Professor Karen O'Day at the University of South Australia. This was about 30 years ago. All right? And what she did was she took different groups of men. Right? They were all men, but different groups of men who all grew up and were born in the outback. So they knew how to live a tribal life. However, at some point in life, they moved into the city and adopted a Western American way of eating. And they were altogether unhealthy. They were obese. Uh, they were uh, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, you know, all of the stuff that we experience in the West. They had all of these diseases, right? So what she did was she took them. And she put them out, you know, in the outback, but in, in, in different places. So some were inland, some were closer to the water, some were over here. Because she wanted to make sure that they had different ways of, of, of eating. And the experiment was done over seven weeks. Now, over that time, up to 80% of their diet was coming from animal flesh. Up, you know, somewhere 13 to 40% was coming from fat which is going to be some type of animal product. And somewhere around 5%, up to 30%, was coming from uh, fruits and vegetables. But really, it was more nuts and berries. All right, so at the biggest, they were getting 30% of their calories from vegetation, right, from plants of, of, of any kind. And what she found in all of these different groups over seven weeks is that, number one, the weight went away. Right. They were no longer obese. They were their weight was what it was supposed to be. Their body fat percentage was what it was supposed to be. So they not only lost weight, they lost body fat, which really is what losing weight is all about. Because you can lose body fat or you can you lose muscle. These guys lost no muscle. They actually gained muscle because they're out hunting, hunt, hunt, hunting and gathering for food, and they lost nothing but body fat. All of the diseases that they had. Seven weeks earlier, were gone, right? And seven weeks only. There was a Canadian doctor, um, Jay Wartman, and he was working with the First Nations people of Canada, which is, again, an indigenous tribe, uh, very high in northern Canada. And same thing, obesity, metabolic syndrome, diabetes. And he went into to the community and he started to talk to the elders because these people now were eating a Western diet, right? Lots of fruit, lots of vegetables, very little meat, no fat. And he, he went to the elders and he spoke to them and said, okay, what were you guys eating a hundred years ago? You know, how, how did your elders teach you to eat? And it was a very high fat diet, you know, a, a, a diet high in um, salmon, obviously up there. So salmon is going to be a fat. Um, Gain meat, uh, just high in meat and nuts and berries again. So he introduced that diet back to this, these people in Canada. And again, within a short amount of time, all of the diseases went away. Magically. No, no, no exercise again. No, nothing. No, no supplements. Nothing. Just everything went away just from changing the diet and going back to how they used to eat. Now, this might be a little bit shocking, what I'm saying, because most people are saying, like, this dude is really giving me this research. Because remember, this is not my opinion, but it's telling me to eat all of these animals and don't eat all these fruits and vegetables. Well, what you got to remember, what you got to look at is, we have been here for a very long time. Now, whether you call it Neanderthal, Cro-Magnon, blah, 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 some type of ancestor to us has been here for a long time. So we've evolved, right? We've been here for two million years, okay? And if you look at the introduction of, say, grains into the human diet, that was just 10,000 years ago. Now, that might sound like a lot, but like I said, we've been here two million. We just started eating grains 10,000 years ago. And if you go back to the historical records of the Bible times, uh, specifically the Old Testament, and you look at the records of Egypt, because Egypt is where wheat originally grows. 
And during that time, the people were first using milk, all right? And the farmers began to switch over to wheat because wheat will produce a bigger crop in the same amount of area. So if you're doing something for financial gain, it's more financial profitable to use wheat instead of millet. But millet can still grow today, it still does grow today, and it's a good alternative to wheat. Um, real big in a lot of Indian dishes, so the Indian people know exactly what I'm talking about. But um, And you can pick up millet at any type of Indian store, but that was a side note. But the farmers started to use wheat and, gra and, and, and grains instead of the millet. And you can go back to the medical records like it's six, seven, eight thousand years ago and see these doctors in Egypt saying, we're starting to see these weird diseases pop up. And it was after the introduction of these grains into the diet. So the whole thing about gluten, this is not new. This is old. The alphabet um, government agencies, you know, the FDA, the CDC, the NA, they know all of this stuff. They've done research on all of this stuff. This stuff is always about the grains, you know, just not being good for us. There was a, uh, another person, Nora Gerdotis, uh, I know I'm messing up her name, but she's a certified nutritional therapist and a clinical neurofeedback specialist. And she's an author. She actually wrote a book, uh, Primal Body, Primal Mind. And one of her most famous statements was that uh, we are all biologically and genetically and physiologically without exception, country gatherers. There's another guy, uh, Boyd Eaton. He's, a, he's an MD, he's a um, medical anthropologist. And he co-authored the book, um, what's this book? Paleo, Paleolithic uh, Prescription. Basically, you know, it's a diet book. Um, and one of his um, sayings is that 99% of all human genes Okay, like I said, we've been here for a long time. Were formed before agriculture. Like before we started eating plants. You go back to the very start, we weren't eating plants. Right? Yeah, we just weren't eating plants way back then. And 99% of all the genes in the body were, you know, there before we started eating these heavy plant-based, well, not even heavy, just plant-based diets all together. But it, it, was, it, was, it was all there. Um, like I said, I know a, a, a lot of this sounds weird. But I'm also going to include some other research, recent research in the links that show that there's no correlation between any disease and eating high amounts of cholesterol where uh, there's no correlation between like butter and eggs and high cholesterol, like, it doesn't exist. It's, it's, it's just not real. Uh, been lied to. Um, I, say, I have no agenda. You know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be vegan. Matter of fact, did this, if I had, what, I wish that I could fund this type of study. Like, we find an island and we take all the vegans and we put them on an island. Not because I hate vegans, I don't hate anybody. But, if they want to be vegan, let's see how this works. All right, and so we put them on this island, and nothing on the island could have anything to do with meat. Like everything has to be searched, and you know. But other than that, they have everything that they want. You know, they have the perfect vegan lifestyle, and I want to sit back and see, in, in no contact with the outside world. You, just, you can't. But I want to see could they survive for three or four generations and be healthy. Because research has just shown that it's not possible. It's just not possible. What, what the data shows is that the more animal flesh that we eat, the more healthy that we are. And like I said, I know that sounds totally backwards and weird and off the wall, but it is what it is. I said, I'm going to leave links to all of this research. Um, I hope you not only watch this video, through the end, but look at this stuff that I'm leaving you. It's like, there it is, right there. You know, the research doesn't lie. And this research, all of the research that I ever share with you is always independent. All right? And that's huge. Because if I'm showing you research that says cholesterol is, 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 is not an issue, 
but the research was paid for by the dairy industry. That's kind of not good research. That's pretty horrible. On the flip side, if I'm showing you research that says cholesterol is bad, and it was paid for by a pharmaceutical company, that's kind of not good research either. So everything that I leave in the descriptions to any of these videos is always independent. It's always some party that has nothing to gain from what they find. And that's the best type of research. So I'm going to leave everything in the description. Like I said, uh, it's all about your diet and your diet is nothing but the food that you eat. And that's what really controls your health. Uh, I'm Coach Mike. Until next time, you guys take care.